Hey everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. Sorry about my voice, I have a sore throat, but I'm not letting that stop me from making soap. No sorry, Bob. So in 2016, I remember the day that I got on Pinterest and I saw for the first time a geode cake and it was like, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. I even considered having it for my wedding cake. Like that's how cool I thought these things were. And I thought to myself, I have got to be able to incorporate that into soap somehow. There has got to be some way. And then life started happening and you know, I kind of forgot about it. But then I saw Emily Shea from Shea Design Studio do a geode soap and she had like made embeds beforehand and then made the soap around it. It was just, it was so cool. And so I thought to myself, okay, I at least know it can be done. And then a few weeks ago, Brambleberry shared a picture from the Snob Love Bar. Yvonne is like, a master mind. She's so awesome when it comes to soap. So she had created a geode soap. So then I had two examples and I thought, okay, if these two people can do it, I know I can do it. By the way, if you're not following Emily and if you're not following Yvonne, you totally should be because those two soap artists are like goals. So I set to work on doing an embedded crystal geode into the side of an entire 17 bar loaf and it worked and then I perfected it over a little bit of time, and now I can finally bring it to you guys and go, voila, I have a tutorial that I know works, and hopefully you guys enjoy it, and if you're soap makers, you try it out, and if you're just like watching soap videos, you find it really cool. <laughs> so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let us begin with a spin. In the stainless steel pitcher, I have my lye water solution, and in this bucket right here, I have all of my oils. The recipe I'm using today will be down in the description box below. After you pour your lye water solution into the oils, you're going to scrapey scrapey your container to make sure that all of the liquid is mixed in with the oils. Now we're gonna blend on low until everything is just past emulsification. We're gonna split this big batch into six different smaller containers. I got these containers at the dollar store and they hold about four cups. I have my entire batch equally distributed among these six containers, so now I'm going to add the colorant to each one. For the first layer, I'm going to be using dark steel gray. This is from Nurture Soap. And I'm just going to add one scoop. And then to the second container, I'm going to add about half of what I put in the first. Into the second container, I am also going to add some Velvet Pearl from Nurture Soap. This is just going to lighten up the gray, but not make it, you know, super white like titanium dioxide would. In the third container, I'm going to put two little scoops of Velvet Pearl because that is going to be our white layer that connects the purple and the gray. Now to add the purples, I'm going to add a very small amount to this first container, a little bit more in the second container, and the most into the third. And into these first two, I'm also going to add some of the Velvet Pearl. So I'm gonna add the most Velvet Pearl into the first one and just a little bit into the second. I'm going to blend up the colors as I mix in the fragrance oil. And I'm not gonna put the fragrance oil into all the containers at the same time because by the time I get ready to pour the sixth one, it's going to be set up pretty well. So to keep them all fluid, I'm just going to mix them up one at a time with the proper amount of fragrance oil in each one. The first color I am mixing up is obviously going to be the darkest gray because this is going to look sort of like the rock that holds all of the amethyst in place. The fragrance oil I'm using today is Lavender Martini. This was one of the only lavenders I actually enjoy. This one and any lavender mixed with apple I think are really good, probably because of the little bit of sweetness. But I can also highly recommend the amethyst fragrance from Brand Berry. It smells really, really good. And once again, the only reason I'm not using it today is just because this smells a little more feminine where I feel this fragrance oil, the Lavender Martini, is a little bit more unisex. Now that I've added my fragrance oil to the container, it is time to blend. I'm going to stick blend this for quite some time because I want it to get pretty thick in the mold pretty fast. That way I can pour the layers faster instead of having to wait around a really long time. Thank you. 
Everything is nice and blended, so it's time to pour this first layer into my molds. The molds I am using today are from Brambleberry. These are the ones that I use most often on my channel. I really, really like the shape of them. They make the perfect size soap bar, in my opinion. I'm going to scrape out my container now instead of leaving any for the top because I want all of the layers to be very uniform. I'm not going to add any of the colors onto the top for pretty. So the soap would pretty much be wasted if I don't get it into the molds right now. When you're doing a layered soap like I am, I highly recommend that you take every mold after you pour a layer and tap it down on the ground or on any other sturdy surface. This will just bring all the air bubbles to the top and make sure that the soap is nice and evenly distributed among your mold. The first layer of soap has completely set up, so now we're going to blend the light gray layer. This gray color is exactly what I want, so I'm going to pour it into the molds. Using my spatula to break the fall a little bit, I am just going to ladle this second layer onto the first one. Come down the second one here. I always put just enough to make sure that the entire first layer is going to be covered, and then I come back and I kind of even it up as far as volume goes. Now this video is already going to be a very time in intensive sort of soap making video and tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip the whole mixing part and show you guys all of the different layers being poured in. So let's cue the funky music. So here's what the soap looks like once it is all in the mold. And while this top part is setting up, I am blending up my soap frosting. Excuse the glitter I have already put here on the top of the soap, but my piping is now ready to go. I'm using the Royalty Soaps piping set available at Nurture Soap and the large round tip that goes with it. I have also taken a little bit of Nurture Soap's Vibrance Purple, mixed it up with some sweet almond oil, and kind of streamed it down the sides of the bag. And I've used their Velvet Pearl Mica to actually color the frosting. So because this piping looks better the more you pipe, I'm gonna start in the middle because this is gonna be the part that nobody sees until that purple starts to really show up there on the side. So you can see starting to come out in like one little stream, but again, I'm gonna try to wait until more comes out and it's even more obvious. Gonna come here to the second soap, start in the middle. Okay, so now the color is really starting to come out, just like this. So I'm gonna go back to the original soap and I'm gonna start piping on the outside edge so that that pretty design is visible on the outside. Every time I do this, I always think of the meringue girls meringues that they have on Instagram. I think they have like a shop in London or something, but every Every time I do this, that's what I think of because they have the cutest little meringue designs. They have like unicorn with all different colors. It's just, they're so cute. It's a really simple way to dress up what is just regular old piping on a soap, which honestly is, is kind of extra anyway, isn't it? <laughs> Now I'm going to put two little dollops on the inside of the soap. As you can probably tell, I added a little more mica this second round. I wanted to make sure that the top was nice and purple. So lilac-y. I love it. Ooh, that one looks ugly. <laughs> 
that's okay by the time all of the tops are on and all the embeds are put in it won't look bad at all that first one's done let's come to the second one this is so therapeutic to me I don't know why but this like particular type of piping specifically the round tip with the mica on the side is just so appealing to me. I'm gonna turn my bag around here so this purple is facing outside. I have all this piping left and only one little dollop to go on every soap, so it is going to be a big one. I still have so much more left. I'm literally going and putting like a whole nother dollop on every single bar. Awesome sauce. So now it's time to put the glitter drizzle on and I've never done this before. This is my first soap to do it with and I'm really happy to be using this biodegradable glitter. Isn't this beautiful? This is the color lavender and this is the color purple. I got these glitters from Fizz Fairy and I did an unboxing video actually on my royalty soaps Instagram so big thank you and shout out to fizzfairy.ca that's where you guys can get these biodegradable glitters they are so beautiful so I've mixed them up in this cup here with a little bit of vibrance purple and some sweet almond oil so you can see super super glittery I'm just gonna do a quick drizzle across the soap make sure every bar gets at least a few little drops I am really digging the way this looks with the glitter. It like just adds that extra bit of sparkle to it. Mica is nice, but glitter is everything. And I'll share a secret with you. I'm actually only like this about glitter when it comes to soap. Like I don't own a sparkly thing in my wardrobe, like nothing. I'm the most boring person otherwise. Yes, yeah, so sparkly. So now it's time to put on the amethyst embeds. So I have them, I have them here. These are called banded amethyst. They like have really really distinct lines on them. They're super pretty. So I'm just going to put one on every single bar starting with the end pieces. And these stones are absolutely stunning. I mean like look at that. That's so beautiful. Now that the real amethysts are in, it's time to put in the soap amethyst. These are little soap crystals that I created. I I think there is a tutorial for these on the Brambleberry website, but I didn't follow any tutorial. I just looked at the colors on real amethyst and just kind of copied. So I started out with like a light gray and then I moved to a really light purple and then I moved to a really dark purple and then I just kind of cut off the tops to make them look a little bit more pointy. So I wasn't very precise about it, but if you are looking for a really good tutorial, I'm pretty sure it's Brambleberry that has it. I could be wrong, but I I will find the tutorial and link it for sure in the description box below. These took so long <laughs> to make. You have no idea. I was just standing here cutting soap for such a long time, but I totally think that they're worth it. Must keep going. Almost done and finished. Oh, would you just look at it? Now, would you just Look at it. Look at those little amethyst crystals. They're so cute. And I love the stones on the top and the glitter. Here's a little close up on the glitter. I'm definitely gonna have to do that again because it makes it so sparkly. I'm not gonna let these sit as long as I normally do because I need the soap to still be kind of squishy to get the geode in. So I'm only gonna let this sit for about 12 to 18 hours max. But then we will come back and put the geode in. We're back 18 hours later and I have taken the silicone liner and the soap loaf out of the wooden mold. So now I'm just going to gently peel back the liner and pop the soap out. And I'm gonna turn the soap on its side on a sanitized surface. And now for the part that will either be really satisfying or just like horrible. <laughs> for you guys to watch. I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna dig a crevice right into the side of the soap. And I'm gonna peel back these layers. I'm not gonna dig super far in because it kinda looks a little bit funny with the shape of this mold. If you're gonna do this yourself and you have access to a tall, skinny soap mold, like the kind they have available at Nurture, that's the type I would recommend using because the shape of the geode cutout just looks a little bit better with a mold that's a little bit taller. If you're wanting 
wanting to make a soap just like mine, I leave the recipe that I use in every video down in the description box below. Also, when making the cavern, make sure you don't get too close to the edge. With the layers here that I have, I'm really only scooping out this light gray layer and I'm pretty much leaving the dark gray untouched. That way, the soap geode is really supported and whenever you cut the soap, you're not ending up with an edge that's really messed up and jaggedy and this also makes sure that all of the soap that you're pouring in over the melt and pour pieces um, is contained. Now that I pretty much have the shape hollowed out I'm going to kind of clean up the edges because you don't really want any of the soaps to be smeared together. It looks a lot nicer if the edges are a little bit neat. I've cut out some amethyst squares that I made a little bit earlier today. I'm just going to stick them into the soap, the points sticking outward, because I personally think that looks more accurate to how a geode really looks in real life. And I'm just going to place these in randomly all throughout the soap. I am placing every single one in individually. I'm also going to take my knife and cut a few smaller pieces along the way, but you don't want super, super small pieces because those come out a lot easier. Another really cool thing you could do is put a mica line on the inside of this and then kind of push the mica in with your little glycerin soap pieces. That way you kind of have like a jaggedy mica edge on the inside. Now that I have all those little chunks in, I'm gonna take my rubbing alcohol and spritz this whole loaf. I'm now going to take a little bit of melt and pour that I have mixed with some of the amethyst glitter and also some Milky Way glitter from the Fizz Fairy and a little bit of purple coloring, just a teeny tiny bit so that it's tinted. I'm gonna suck some up in my pipette here and I'm going to gently drizzle starting at the top across all these little pieces I put in. I'm going pretty slow because I don't want any air bubbles to be present either on the inside of the soap or here on the edge, but I do want to make sure that all the cracks and crevices are filled in and I'm pretty much using this melt and pour as a glue, especially in the middle because that is the part that is most prone to having these little bits fall out. Now that I've made sure that all of the little soap geode pieces are good and covered. I'm gonna spritz again with rubbing alcohol. This is what the soap kind of looks like once everything has been covered in melt and pour. Now obviously if you wanted a more realistic looking geode you would discard the glitter because real geodes don't have glitter in them but I like a fantasy geode. I'm not gonna let this harden for very long maybe 10 minutes at the most because the longer melt and pour hardens the more brittle it becomes and I don't want it to get so brittle that it kind of cracks and breaks out of the soap before it has time to really set into the side. I've let this soap sit about 10 minutes, so now I am going to chop off the bars individually. I'm cutting them with my bud cutter and I'm making sure that the soap is facing up. This gives us a smaller chance of the geode cracking. So I'm just gonna push down very gently. You want to go really slow here. And then when you pull off a bar, your soap is going to look a little something like this. So it has the geode on the side. Here's all of the individual layers. I got a little wonky right there. But we have the dark gray, the light gray, to the white, to the purples. And then of course we have the amethyst on top and the little amethyst on the side. I am digging this soap. This is probably one of my top 10 favorite soaps I've ever made. And I'm really getting that geode cake vibe. Let's cut you guys off another piece so that you can see See? And here we go, another super cool geode cutout. And that glitter on the top is just divine. Mega digging this bar, you guys. I think I'm gonna have to definitely do this in the future. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, press the little notification bell if you wanna see more videos. And the question of the day is, would you like to see more geode soap? I really liked doing it for amethyst because I think amethyst geodes and like formations, you know, like the tall ones that have like the alcove and it has all the little crystals sticking out. I just think they're beautiful, but I also kind of want to do this for like 
an opal maybe? So let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that creation. You can click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen, whichever way that is, I always forget. Cast your vote and depending on what you guys say, I may make more of these. This soap will be available to purchase on March 7th at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time at royaltysoaps.com. And until next week, I hope you all have an absolutely royal day and bye for now. Meow. <laughs>